Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy heart. Amen. We're going to go over to the book of Galatians today. I never know if I'm going to say this morning or this. Um, I, I've got a lot of scripture for you guys to kind of spread out here amongst you. Uh, Justin, give me 2 Corinthians. First John, the second chapter, hold on to it. Carrie, give me first John, the fourth chapter, hold on to it. Do you want to read Kayla? Okay, give me a second Peter, the first chapter, and hold on to it. And Aubrey, you give me Genesis, the ninth chapter. Version matter? Uh, preferably the King James, because I, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Okay, we're in Galatians, the first chapter. We're going to pick up here in the sixth verse. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, unto not be the servant of Christ. Okay. Now I have heard everybody use that passage of scripture to justify their brand of doctrine but we really don't realize what Paul was fighting when Paul was writing these words. There were people that were trying to come into the church and they were trying to circumcise and everybody wants to point to us and now they call us the new Judaizers and all this other stuff. But that is not all that Paul was wrestling against and that Paul was fighting against. Um, 2 Corinthians 11, give me verses 1 through 4. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another... Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Okay, another Jesus, and we, we read this, and we, we think automatically, well, I mean, this is the, the Jesus that gets preached in all these churches and everything. And No, actually, they had brought another Jesus out, and they preached another Jesus to the churches and that's where we are now and basically what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use scripture and I'm going to show you this is not surprising this is not something they didn't know that was going to happen but these churches out there now there's going to be a general resurrection at the end I don't know what God does with these people because what passes for Christianity is a spaghetti noodle mess it's all wound in around one another. There's so many different religions. There's so many different mythologies. And all of it is just a blob on your plate. Spaghetti, you can wind it up on a fork and eat it. This stuff will send you to hell. Amen. We have to unwind it. I, I, you guys know that that church in Gaffney, when we were there, I stood up there with that nice pretty orange rope and all the knots that represented all the false doctrine. And we have to pull those knots out. And we're still pulling. There, there was a time when we used to think if you wasn't exactly like us, well, you're going to hell. You need to be exactly like us because we got the truth. We had a piece of the truth. There's a lot of truth out there. 
We had a piece of the truth. Problem is, we're still pulling knots. We're still getting rid of stuff. We're still trying to weed out the paganism. And it, you can't blame everything on the Roman Catholic Church. It is just a manifestation of what the... What's the best way to put this? It is the manifestation of the mythology of Nimrod. I really I don't want to keep you guys here for hours on end but we go back and we look at the Tower of Babel and they were all with one language okay we, we know that it was revealed back it was revealed to uh, Adam and Eve Adam and Eve saw God come up and he made them coats of skins he sacrificed that animal to cover their nakedness and he made them coats of skins. Well, Abel, we find out in the book of Luke, Abel was a prophet. He knew that it took that blood sacrifice to please God instead of the pretty vegetables Cain was bringing up there. Abel knew by revelation that it was a blood sacrifice. People knew by the time they get to the ark and they understand because Noah comes off the ark and what's the first thing that uh, Noah did? Well, there were seven clean animals of each clean type of animal and if you didn't have your pookie brought with you, you was in trouble because you was getting sacrificed when you got... They took this to the Tower of Babel. They all knew about... They, they think they're, in their arrogance, they think they can come before God and they think they can reason with God. It was pitched within and without with pitch. That way when the, the earth was flooded with... So when the water came up against it, then they could climb to the top of it and put their finger in God's face and say, who do you think you are? He already told him he wasn't going to flood it again. Anyways, in their arrogance, God scattered the languages. Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz, suddenly they become Isis and Osiris and uh, what was their baby? Horus, I believe. But all of a sudden it gets spread out. The same mythology gets spread out to the four corners of the earth. When Columbus came to South America, they were surprised to see that they already had a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They already had a trinity over there waiting for them because it came out of the Nimrod religion. The names were changed. It went to Greece. It went to Egypt. It went to Africa. It went to the four corners of the globe. We have Catholicism don't particularly hate Catholics. I hate their doctrine. They're worshiping Nimrod. They're worshiping Tammuz. They're worshiping Semiramis. They just don't know it. What does God do with them at the end time general resurrection? I don't know. I don't know what God does with them. Can you not be faithful and miss it? I believe you can. I believe you can. But anyways, back to what's going on here. There was false doctrine already everywhere in Paul's day. They were preaching another Jesus. They were preaching another salvation. And they're taking this and they're running off to all these other churches. I can't remember in the book of Acts which church it was. Paul says, listen, as soon as I leave, the wolves are coming. They're going to be among you. And even amongst your own selves... Grievous wolves will arise just trying to pull followers after themselves. It's not always about the money. There are people that like the power that comes when you have the pulpit. That's the reason why you have these many Pentecostal popes that get up and they want to control everything that's around them. They're not in it for the money. They're in it for the power. Paul knew that. Paul knew the power of ego. And he's warning these people because there are people that will say anything 
to get people to follow them. Okay, so we know that they're going to preach another Jesus. We know as the serpent beguiled Eve. First John, second chapter, give me 18 through 23. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Okay, before I even touch that, give me 1 John 4 and 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Okay, 2,000 years removed and products of the public school system. We read that and it really, oh, okay, John, what are you trying to say here? Because being products of the public school system, you're not taught anything about Gnosticism. You're not taught anything about the way the Greeks believe. And when they start bringing in Greek philosophy and they start mixing it in with the church, it was after that generation had died, one of the most venerated saints of the second century church was Justin Martyr. Justin Martyr was a Greek philosopher. He never gave up his philosopher's toga. He kept the toga. He continued being a philosopher, but now he's a philosopher for Christ. It doesn't work that way. He didn't bring the doctrine of the Messiah. He did not bring the doctrine of Yeshua. What he did is he brings in Plato. And he brings in Socrates. And he starts mixing them into Christianity. We read John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. To them the Word is Sophia. The Word is its own separate God. It, it's not Yahweh. It's their own separate God. Because this is the way they think. Greek thought and Hebrew thought aren't compatible. It, it, it doesn't, it, it just doesn't jive. It, it doesn't work. So anyways, these Gnostics, this is exactly what John is talking about. They were teaching, some of them were teaching, that Jesus came, but Jesus was just like a theophany, just like uh, Jehovah appeared in the Old Testament. When, when uh, Abraham was in the door of his tent and he saw three beings coming down through there, that was a theophany of God. It was a representation. It's not saying God always looks that way, but God... Jackie said earlier, Abraham recognized him as Yehovah, Yahweh, whatever you want to call it. He recognized him, my Lord. Amen. What the Gnostics were teaching were, was that Jesus came, but he was a spiritual body. Well, there's problems with that because he was the Lamb of God. To be the Lamb of God, he had to have blood. He had to be in the flesh to be able to shed his righteous blood for our unrighteous selves. So they're taking away automatically the power from the gospel. They're taking away the forgiveness of the sin. And John is out there hammering out there against it saying, No, if you're saying that Christ has not come in the flesh, then you are antichrist. That's what John was saying. That's what John was saying. So much 
false doctrine had already at that point become mixed in with what the truth had. That's how we're up here today and the church that you see, even those that are doing their best to walk in truth, it is a Gentile concoction. The church wasn't Gentile. The church was Jewish. There's a reason why they But he's our Messiah. What most people don't realize is most of the Greek religions can see. And cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he has courage from his old sin. Is that Second Peter? Okay. Uh, what does First Peter one and nine say? One and nineteen. I'm sorry. Did I say one and nine? What did I do? That's okay. We're still going somewhere, even if I got the wrong scripture out there. Amen. 9, 26, and 27. But we, we've got this hodgepodge of religions. We've got all these different... Oh, I was going to tell you where all this came from. That just bothers me that I got the scripture wrong and I'm not sure what I... It's one of my... And without spot. Okay, he had to have the blood to shed for us. Where this came from, as you guys know me and my documentaries, I was sitting there and I was watching on my little tablet there a history channel... Channel? A history channel documentary on the walls of Constantinople. And they showed Constantinople. Okay, that they showed a picture of what they assume was Mary holding the baby Jesus and it's got nothing to do. Don't you just love the European Mary? The European Jesus? It's all just so wonderful. That's got nothing to do with Yeshua. That's got nothing to do with the Messiah. That is Semiramis and Tammuz. Amen. But I'm watching this, and they're saying that it was through religion that their empire lasted a thousand years, or whatever it was, and how great they were at spreading Christianity. We get on to the Muslims because the Muslims spread their religion with the edge of a sword. Check into the to the Byzantine Empire. A, it's got nothing to do with God Almighty. And B, the religion they had, they spread at the end of a sword. He was our lamb. His blood was shed for us. Okay, now let's get into this. Genesis. That was just the introductory. Ninth chapter. Give me 26 and 27. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth. He will dwell in the tents of Shem. What is a tent? What is a tabernacle? A temporary dwelling place. Well, a dwelling place. Tell that to the nomads that it's temporary. They live in it all their life. But it is the tent. It is the covering that goes over top of them. It was prophesied when they came off the ark that the descendants of Japheth would dwell in the tabernacles in the tent of Shem. Okay, what, what do they preach? Well, the Jews have lost it. The descendants of Shem have lost it. The Hebrews have lost it. Israel's got nothing to do with anything. So Japheth has come in and he's kicked Shem out of his own tent. It's our tent now. It's Greek. No. No. When we dwell in the tents of Shem, we are accepting over ourselves that covering. Amen. 
You're not going to come in and paint the tent a different color. Amen. Amen. You don't come in to this salvation and start changing things to make it the way you want it to be. You don't come to God and say, God, this doesn't make sense to me, so I want it to be this way. You come to God and you say, God, this doesn't make sense to me. Help me to... But that is not what has been done. We have tried to concoct our own covering. We have made our own covenant with a being that does not exist. Amen. He's the God of Israel. We've made Jesus in our image. And He's fine with anything you want to do. Yeshua, not so much. But Jesus... He, he's good with all of it. He'll save you no matter how rotten you are. You can just stay in your sin even though His name should be called Jesus and He'll save His people from their sins. But we'll, we'll, we'll go around that. Huh? They made it convenient. Yeah, they made it convenient because they concocted their own God. They concocted their own doctrine. Amen. We find out in the book of Isaiah this is the way. You'll hear a voice when you step to the left or you step to the right. You'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Amen. There's nobody behind you when you're walking in their road. What does God do with them? They've been lied to. I used to go to a Southern Baptist church with my dad years ago. I was saved in a Southern Baptist church. I was baptized in a Southern Baptist church. I didn't know God from Adam. Went to the Methodist church. They were trying to send me to college. I was going to go to West Virginia Wesleyan. I'd have probably been doctor at by now. I didn't know God. I knew some stuff about the Bible. I didn't know God. I did not know God until I got the Holy Ghost. And yeah. then I knew it. garbage that had been put in my head to get to the point where I am now where I can almost stand up instead of fall down all the time. Amen. 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 That's a long time. That's they don't know that they don't know God and they get offended when you tell them they don't know God. Isaiah, the 54th chapter. Um, well, I guess we'll just go down the line again. Justin, you want to get me Jeremiah? 31st chapter, of course. Microphone? You can bring Abby with you. Yell? <laughs> Okay, give me Isaiah 56, verse 8, and yell. Uh, and it's going to be 24 through 28. I'll give it back to you when, when we get ready here. But Isaiah, the 54th chapter, I'm going to pick up in verse 1. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. Thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. And let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not. Not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. So what is happening here? We know that Noah prophesied by God that Japheth was going to come in to the tents of Shem. And 
God is reminding them that the time is coming, that they are going to have to lengthen the cords on their tents. They are going to have to expand the covering on their dwelling places because there are going to be Gentiles, the sons of Japheth, and they are going to be coming in to dwell with them. Amen. But we're dwelling with In Deuteronomy, in Leviticus, you'll have one law for he that is born in Israel and the stranger. Amen. He's brought us in as strangers into the covenant. If you want with Israel, there's only one covenant. There's one law. And we're all bound to it. You don't want the law, you're not going to dwell in Israel. I mean, that, that's pretty simple. Amen. Can we make it more simple? Jeremiah 31, 30. That I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them. It's my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God, and they shall be my people. So he's going to make a covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. He uh, shows me the covenant that God is going to make with the Gentiles. Uh, problem is, I don't have that much time. I've God about a covenant made with the Gentiles. The Amen. But they're not coming to their own accord and they're not coming by their own ways. You come through a Bible study where he said he was going to give Israel his spirit to cause them to be able to walk in the statutes. Amen. Amen. He gives his believers the Holy Ghost to cause them to be able to walk in his statutes. Amen. Because there is a law. Amen. There is a way things are supposed to be done Amen. according to the word of God. But through This free salvation that very much is free. You don't come in. I don't even know if you guys know what I'm talking about. There used to be a commercial. What was it? Your way right away at Burger King now. It's not Burger King. You don't get it. Not vice versa. God, let me bring this visa in. There's a way to walk for God. Amen. And it works. Amen. That's why I've got problems with people wanting to change it. Because it works. Uh, Isaiah 56 and 8, and since you don't want to move, real loud. The Lord God, which gathereth the outcast of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to him, beside those that are gathered unto him. He's going to gather more in besides those that are gathered. Will repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promises unto you and unto your children and to all them that are far off. He's going to gather those besides those that are already gathered. Jesus said, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. Amen. I got to go get them. 
He's got us. Now we're supposed to go help gather some more. Amen. It's what the church is supposed to do, but the church operates in a mode of confusion. How can anybody really get saved in a confused mess? If they don't even understand the law of God, if they don't even understand 2 plus 2 equals 4 spiritually, how are we... We're not... Uh, Romans 11, give me 24 through 28. For if thou wert cut off of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all, and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Sion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Okay, so what Paul is saying here, and that, that's one of the ways I, I do like the newer translations because instead of saying a good olive tree, it says a cultivated olive tree. It's what God has been dealing with for all this time. He's been working at it and he's been fertilizing it and he's been doing all he can do to get a good olive tree. And he's going to take us that are the wild olive tree by nature and he grafts us not into a lemon tree, not into an orange tree, not into an apple tree, but he takes us and he grafts us into the olive tree. And there's more there that I'm not getting into right now. But he's taken us from some place and put us where we belong in him. In him. He made us part of Israel. He didn't allow us to grow our own way. He didn't allow us to grow as our own tree. There, there's a lot of people they have. Israel's going to come back in and they're going to be saved by the law. Where do these people get this stuff? And that's not a straw man argument. I mean, they're out there and this is what they're saying. Where do these people get this stuff? Because that's not what the Bible says. But for so many years, we've all gone along that route. But uh, Ezekiel, the eighth chapter. Um, Joe, go back and get me 2 Corinthians 11 and 4 again. Yes, sir. We're going to wind this up here shortly. Ezekiel, the 8th chapter, the 14th verse. says, And he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. In the altar were about five and twenty men, and their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. Before I say it, get me 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Okay. You, you look at the pictures they have of Jesus 
in the Catholic Church and in her her, her harlot daughters and the, the the Greek Catholics, which is what they are, and the Lutherans and all this. That is not the Messiah. To us, whatever you want to call him, I've heard both. But they, they have saints of old, quote unquote. I, I don't read about a sun disc behind anybody in the Bible. Amen. The brightness of his coming, maybe, but a sun disc? It's not there. It's not there. But they're worshiping their sun god to moose. And it's another very interesting subject if you want to research it on your own. But go back and look, and I never can keep it straight because Persian and Roman, they're, they're, it's both Mithra, but for one of them it's... Read and you search it out. There's a lot of things that came from Mithra worship and they incorporated it into Gentile Christianity, including his birthday. They just took one religion and they swapped it with another. Their own covenant with God. They made their own holidays. They made Easter. They made Christmas. They took the paganism and they inserted it into the covenant and then they're trying to present this to God and say, God, save me. You need saved from that. Yes. Amen. It's an abomination. You cannot take something from paganism and use it to worship God. Amen. Amen. Can't get their favorites. Amen. I, I need to go back and watch that Bible study. Amen. You keep talking about it. That's Br Brother White. He's got a way of putting things too. But no, you can't eat at both tables. You, you can't sow with mixed seed. Amen. And that's what they're doing. They're trying to take truth and they're trying to take paganism and they're trying to sow their field with it. And they're getting some kind of hybrid that can't reproduce. There's no fruit on it. There's no fruit on it. At least not the kind of fruit God's looking for. They've made their own Messiah. They've made their own Christ. And that's what we were talking about on the way over here. And it's not an original thought with me. I've heard it from somewhere else. But when you get to the root of Christ, the meaning of the word Christ is to be rubbed with animal fat. But the Messiah has so much more. But uh, we'll, we'll get off of that. Matthew, who? Carrie. Michaela, Michaela, I'm sorry. Kayla, would you get me Hebrews? The second chapter, verses 16 and 17. And I made sure I told you the right scripture this time. Okay, go ahead, give me Matthew 5, 17 through 20. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the sh same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I thought you was finished. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And I, I know I use this scripture probably at least every third time I'm standing up here, but it is so plain. Jesus didn't come to change things around. He didn't come to make it okay to do things that were called an abomination in the Old Testament. He didn't come to make a way that way. There, there's a, 
you guys know I, I'm on Twitter quite a bit. I, I saw a guy with a Twitter handle the other day, and his Twitter handle is Stoner Jesus. Honestly, what they've created, that's about what he is. He, he, he's a long-haired hippie. Yeah, all he wants is pizza. coming on a white horse with a sword. Amen. But they've created this guy that's okay with anything you want to do. Well, they created their own Messiah. One jot or one tittle. It's not going to change. It, it took me 21, 22 years of having the Holy Ghost before I got into the Sabbath before I, I knew that hold on a second he didn't change that I, I, I've been preaching for years Jeremiah 31 and 31 through 33 that he's going to write his law and he's going to write the ten commandments on your heart except for the fourth one we, we, we've got to take it for what it is we can't create our own religion Hebrews, second chapter, verses 16 and 17. Do you have a Bible there? A phone, I, I guess. First John, the second chapter. Okay, King James Version, please. Okay, Kayla? For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Your but voice he, has changed. He took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. Okay, now back up and read that verse again. Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high That's, that's not what I was, I was talking about, the part where he said that he's taking on him the, the seed of for, ver for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, Thank but he you. took on him the seed of Abraham. And uh, we're supposed to call him brethren. He's supposed to call us brethren, but he was made like unto his brethren, and his brethren are the seed of Abraham. to come through him but we are made the seed of Abraham the covenant that he is making he is writing that in our hearts John 1st John 2nd chapter give me verses 3 through 6 and we'll close and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments he that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a lie Saith he abideth in him of himself the command because it wasn't in the Torah. kept the feast of the dedication. <laughs> it is gotta, I, I don't want to get comfortable in something that is not right with God. I don't want Much right when there's this much to go. Amen. Start walking for 
Jesus said? 